Good morning everyone from Toledo. Um, we didn't sleep very well. I guess it's the emergency lights whenever there's some light. Like whenever it's not completely dark in the room, we are not able to sleep um, so well. So we are pretty tired and uh, we'll need to uh, survive through the day with coffees or something because we are planning on visiting Toledo um, like the center of Toledo and all the monuments, museums I mean not all of them, that would be impossible in one day but the most important ones I also saw that there's like a bracelet that for 10 euros gives you access to seven monuments so maybe we check that out and um, we will also stop for lunch here at this Airbnb and then in the afternoon we'll keep exploring Toledo hopefully we have the energy to walk around because it's like in total it might be like 15 kilometers uh, with the museums and everything included so yeah What a nice surprise, there's a market here at the free parking in Toledo. I don't know if they have pastiche de nata, but they surely have something nice from here like marzipan. So we'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. We came just in time for our first monument, which is the archaeological park of the Roman Circus of Toledo. You can see they open at 8.30, it's 8.30. So let's go inside for our first monument. Toledo was a very important city during Roman times. As any other major Roman city, Toledo had a circus which was built during the first century. This circus was located in the north of the Roman city. So the old city center, which is south of here and we'll visit in a moment, dates back to at least the Roman era. More than half of the structure still remains without excavating, but you can roughly guess the dimensions and experts are sure about it. It seems as if Toledo was playing an important role in the administration of the Roman province of Hispania. Coming after the Romans, the Visigoths left this building abandoned, and when the Muslims came and invaded the Iberian Peninsula, they used the circus as a market and after that as a cemetery. There was a Roman theater next to the circus, but it was removed to free the site for other uses. So this was a circus, was a Roman circus, and these rocks that you can touch, it's impressive like you can just touch them this was built by romans or in other words by their slaves but this has so much history it's crazy so now we are going to check out the puerta de alfonso VI. very arabic very moorish The gate of Alfonso VI was the main entrance to the city during Moorish times and it was built by the Arabs. You can see the Mudejar style in the arcs showing that it underwent remodelations during that period. Now we are going to the Puerta de Bisagra which is a gate that leads to the center of Toledo. The title of main entrance for the gate of Alfonso VI was taken away and given to the gate of Pisagra that was also built by the Moors. It was remodeled into the Renaissance style in the 16th century. At the center of the facade you can see the coat of arms of Charles V 
who made Toledo the capital of Castile. Entering the patio that lies between both sides of the gate, you can see a statue of Charles V. Now we're going to Puerto del Sol and Ermita del Cristo de la Luz. This gate, called Puerta del Sol, is from the late 14th century, so built during the Mudejar era. Just above the entrance, in the middle, you can see the ordination of the Visigothic Ildefonsus, an important bishop who was canonized and thus became a saint. Saint Ildefonsus is Toledo's patron saint. We were gonna check it out inside, but uh, fortunately it's closed. It opens at 10 a.m., uh, but it's half past nine, so we'll need to wait. But we do not have much time, we only have one day. There you see the prices, but you also have that tourist bracelet for 10 euros gives you access to seven monuments including this one uh, so it's quite a big deal so if you're here and you want to visit all the monuments or most monuments then you can get that bracelet i think we're gonna get it too we might use the time to have a little snack for breakfast somewhere and also go to the next place which is soko dover uh, which was the center of the city when the Arabs, when the Moors were here. So this was the price of the breakfast. Apparently my breakfast didn't have coffee included so they charged that separately but I would say the price is quite okay for what it was because it was quite filling. Everything was very tasty and natural so yeah, not so expensive. Now we are going back to the ermita, um, so that hermit, because it's open now and we're gonna get the touristic bracelet so that we can visit the seven most important monuments of Toledo so we got a bit lost but we are here <coughs> so we got the bracelets they were 10 euros each and now we're gonna explore the hermit over here and then we can still we we can explore the following monuments uh, that's where we are now ah, so it's not I mean here they say a mosque it was a mosque then it turned into a Christian church then Church of the Jesuits Real College of the Noble Ladies, yeah, ladies yeah. <laughs> Monastery of St. John of the Kings Synagogue St. Mary the White, Church of Santo Tome, and Church of the Savior. Unfortunately, it doesn't, doesn't include the cathedral. Uh, if we have time to like have a look inside, and it doesn't cost much money, we can maybe try to get in there. Yeah. Out of the 10 mosques that the city of Toledo had, this mosque is the best preserved one. Built in the year 999, it was used during Muslim times to welcome visitors and to prepare those who leave the city. After the Christian reconquest of Toledo, Alfonso VI gave the building to the Knights of the Order of St. John, who built a hermitage in the Mudejar style. The building itself is a small square structure four columns capped with Visigothic capitals 
divide the interior into nine vaults, with the central vault being the highest and forming a kind of cupola. As it was typical from that time, the capitals and columns were taken from previous buildings and recycled. There is a fresco inside written with Arabic letters, but it doesn't mean anything, since it was seen as decoration back then. So the next monument we go to is the Church of the Jesuits. This church is also called the Church of St. Ildefonsus, the patron of Toledo, because he was born at this place before the church was built in his name. Featuring the Baroque style, the construction was started in the 17th century and lasted for a century. The interior is white and the main nave forms a Latin cross with a high dome in the crossing. On the sides of the main nave you can see chapels dedicated to several saints and figures. The transept features two big baroque altars, one of Saint Joseph with Christ as a child and one of the baptism of Christ. Whoa. You can go upstairs to the tower and you'll have an amazing view of Toledo. That is, if you are not scared of fights like I am, because these stairs were open riser stairs where you could see the ground while going up, which makes me feel dizzy. So I stayed on the ground floor and my wife went upstairs to film some footage. Now we go to the Church of the Savior. The Savior's Church was a mosque, though historians are not sure whether it was built during Visigothic or even Roman times. The current building though still resembles a mosque and is even oriented to the southeast, so in the direction of Mecca. The pilasters depict Jesus performing miracles as described by the Bible. You can go through a small tunnel downstairs to get to a patio with rooms and a platform. So we are now going to the Church of Santo Tomé, that's our next stop, number 4. We are in the Jewish Quarter, and what we have before our eyes is the church and former mosque of Santo Tomé. The Mudajar style tower stands out with its squared form. This is because it used to be a minaret. 
Once Alfonso VI reconquered the city, the minaret was turned into a bell tower and the mosque was remodeled into a church by the order of Count Orgaz. The inside of this church is not that impressive, three naves with crossing and a polygonal apse. What does stand out quite a bit though is the Chapel of the Conception, which hosts arguably the most famous painting by the most famous artist in Toledo, The Burial of Count Orgaz by El Greco. This Renaissance painting of the Mannerist era depicts a local legend from the 14th century. The Count of Orgaz, who was of noble descendants from the last ruling dynasty of the Byzantine Empire, expressed his desire to be buried in this church after his death. Well, it is said that during the burial, St. Stephen and St. Augustine descended from the heavens and buried him with their own hands. If you look at this painting from a distance, you can recognize a composition in which the heavens forming a triangle stand above the terrestrial sphere who is watching the miracle of the burial. If you look close enough, you can see a ray of light shining from Jesus towards the lifeless body of the Count of Orgas. And his wish of being buried here became true, with his body resting below the painting and an epitaph written in Latin next to it. Now we are going to the synagogue of Saint Mary the White One. This is technically a synagogue, but it is owned by the Catholic Church and they turned it into a museum. And it is not only a synagogue, it is considered to be the oldest synagogue building in Europe still standing, dating from the 12th century. The building is the culmination of Toledo's cultural diversity. It was built under the Christian Kingdom of Castile by Islamic architects to be used by Jews. In Toledo, these three religions coexisted mostly peacefully during the Middle Ages, which was not common in other places. The synagogue is built in a mudejar style. It has a plain white interior, giving meaning to its name of Saint Mary the White. It is divided in five ales, with the central ale being slightly larger. These ales are separated by horseshoe arches that are very typical in Islamic architecture, with the capitals belonging to the Mudejar style. A scallop shell topped arc at the center of the synagogue catches the attention of the observer. This was the location where they would put the Torah arc a structure that holds the scrolls of the Torah. Another detail is the floor mosaic, with a pattern of Jewish stars in kite-shaped containers. Outside of the building there's a courtyard. This is where people used to congregate before and after prayer services. So now we are going to the monastery of St. John of the Kings. This monastery was ordered to be built in the 15th century by the Catholic monarchs Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile to commemorate the birth of their son John and the supposed victory at the Battle of Toro over the Portuguese army of Alfonso V. No one really won at this battle, but both sides claimed victory. It did solidify, however, the union of the Aragonese and Castilian kingdoms, which was decisive enough. Why did they choose Toledo to build it? Well, Toledo's location is quite central, and it was the capital of the Visigoths when Spain was still united. Reconstituting that lost unity through the joint kingdom, it is symbolic to erect it in the same capital of the formerly united Spain. The monastery is built in the Isabelline style, a late Gothic style not to be confused with the Manueline style from Portugal that we saw in previous videos such as Bataya. The church inside is in the form of a Latin cross, with a short transept and a long main nave. It has three chapels on each side of the main nave and two under the choir. Its cloister has a garden and in the upper floors we can see mudejar features. Though the monastery deteriorated over time, 
and it was badly damaged during the Napoleonic Wars, it did get renovated and is being well maintained as of nowadays. So now we are going to the Royal College of the uh, Noble Ladies. As the name already says, this was a girl's school. It was founded in the 16th century by the Archbishop of Toledo, Juan Martinez Silicio. The girls were taught to be good mothers, but it was reserved only to those who had pure blood, so no non-Christian descendants. If you were Muslim or Jew, then you could forget about getting inside of this college. The building is in the Neo-Mudejar style, an attempt of that time to revive the Mudejar style, similar to what the Renaissance attempted with Roman and Greek architecture. The church chapel is simple in structure and consists of a single nave, and there you can see, somewhere you can see, the Virgin of the Remedies, which is there on that chapel. There is a kind of patio that joins the other buildings of the college. I wouldn't call it a cloister since it does have glass windows and it's not a monastery. I found no information about it but I guess the girls were here during recess. I found one room particularly interesting. It might have been the principal's office. The roof displays symmetrical patterns carved in wood and has a symbol that you can often find among educational institutions. So we've done it. We visited the seven monuments from the bracelet in one morning. Now we're going to the Airbnb to eat lunch a small lunch and rest a little and then we continue exploring Toledo and uh, we'll see if we pay more for entrances but we already saved 22 euros with this bracelet right you. or you said it would be 21. 21 euros yeah so we already saved quite a lot with these bracelets Thanks for watching so far. In the afternoon we are visiting Sokodover Square, the Alcazar and the Cathedral among other monuments, so make sure you don't miss it.